everybody, this is Sherry at djsundry.blogspot.com and welcome to day two of the 12 Days of Christmas Tags. I am excited about the um, tag for today. This tag is very simple. Um, the video shouldn't be very long at all. And there are a few um, techniques I want to discuss. Now yesterday I talked about using these um, small ink pads, pigment pads, and you don't have to use pigment, you can use dye um, ink pans, uh, pads, and going around the edges of your um, thing, your, your piece of paper to distress it, to give it that more finished edge, so you don't have that white um, edges of the paper showing and those kind of things. Well today, the first technique that I'm going to show you is a different way that I also use to distress. Now there are many ways to do this. I'm just showing you one today and I'll probably come back on a different day and show you a different technique. Or a, a, I should rephrase that. The same technique but a different tool. So, um, sorry about that. I'm using my phone to keep some weight down for me. So, um, today's technique is distressing using that Distress Ink from Tim Holtz. Now, Distress Ink from Tim Holtz is water activated, and so it blends really nicely if you choose to use water, and there's some really cool things you can do with these ink pads. And uh, today we're not getting into those. Now what I have here is just a makeup wedge. Remember, um, I found these from years ago. I don't even wear liquid foundation anymore. I've changed my foundation to a different type. But I had all these makeup wedges, and they are foam, and they make really good distress tools. Not the only ones I have, but they do make them. Now, I keep my distress um, pads in these little Ziploc bags. They're probably like jewelry bags or something. But I keep them in there, and I keep them labeled so that I'm not mixing up my inks. So I just... Um, dab that across my dye base pad and I start off the mat and work in and the reason why I do that most of the time now sometimes I've done it the other way but when you start off the mat and work in like I'm doing here you are less likely to get a big old piece of um, a big old edge and uh, with the distress ink even if you do get an edge sometimes you can blend them um, but you're less likely to have a big line. I had a little bit of one there than if you worked here because if you plop that down in the middle and work out, you're going to see the lines from your pads. And you see I just simply worked in a circular motion from the outside in. Now, remember from yesterday's tag that I um, just had printed these up on just plain white cardstock. This was just plain white cardstock, but for the color palette that I was using today, I needed to do something different with it and I really wanted this vintagey creamy type color. I didn't want to have to reprint it um, and get my computer out and get it all set up so I decided instead to distress it using the frayed burlap. So now let's move on to the rest of the tag. Um, I'm th For today's paper I'm using the Christmas matte stacks from Die Cuts with a View. Now, let me tell you, that brings me to my second tip or technique. This is especially for new um, stampers who, or scrappers, or card makers, or tag makers, or whatever you may be. This is for you. When you buy a, a stack like this, most often the papers inside are meant to coordinate with each other. Now there are some papers in here I would never put together and there are whole tutorials on YouTube about mixing um, pattern papers and ideas on how to do them. And um, they're really good and as you have time you really should watch them. But by and large the papers are meant to coordinate with each other. So I went through and I found two different papers that I wanted to use and I've already prepped my tag. Again, I'm using these number eight tags from Ranger. Hopefully that was on camera. Sorry about that if it wasn't. And I've already prepped my tag and I've done the inking. This is the back side of the tag and this is where we're going to start today. Now I use the same, this time instead of laying it down and coming off of my mat, remember if you're doing this technique where we come off the mat and work our way in like I did, the mat that I use is a non-stick craft mat and I just have to wipe it clean. Don't get out your big mat like this. If you're going to do this and you don't have a nice um, clean, cleanable mat, 
be sure and have some scratch paper. I've seen some people use, you know, the big desk calendars. They work great because when it's all used up and the inks you don't want to use anymore, you can just rip it off and start on the next one. That's one idea. A piece of scratch paper underneath is another idea. I just use my mat. And then I went around and lightly distressed the edges. You really can't tell a huge difference um, because it coordinates with this paper so well. However, you can tell a little bit of a difference because you don't see as much of a white edge here. That You still get the manila edge from the inside tag, but you don't see as much of a white edge. So this is the back, and we're just going to put our second day of Christmas um, saying on this and just tape it down so we'll be done with the back. Now I'm also using Three Girl Jam. Um, I'm using this time I'm using the Harvest Halloween Halloween Harvest um, bundle. It was a seasonal and you can it's part of the seasonal bundle that has three or two I think it has three different um, seasonal type um, variegated um, uh, crinkle ribbon on it but I am I chose this one because I really like the vintage feel to it but yet it's just got that underlying um, bit of sparkle so this is the back side of the tag now on the front side of the tag I chose a coordinating paper and I matted that down and then I took a little bit of paper tray ink vintage cream paper and I took a piece of remember this paper from the back I took a little piece of that and I mounted it on a little piece of vintage cream because more times than not you don't want to put pattern paper on top of pattern paper because they'll get lost in each other and this just kind of gives it an anchoring point or, or a, a small contrast but notice I don't have a wide border so I put that on just to provide that interest and then I distress that a little bit to kind of soften that vintage cream. It was a little brighter than I wanted it. So that was um, how I coordinated my pattern paper. So your second tip of the day is coordinating pattern papers. And the easiest way to do that is to buy papers together in a collection or in the same pad. So that's the second tip and we'll move on to two more quick tips. Now the next thing that I want to do, and I've already got my tag already again I chose the vintage cream because that's the underlying color here here and here and my third tip here is adding dimension now you can see kind of around the two here how um, much brighter that vintage cream is and it comes as it comes out from the two I'm okay with it I just didn't want that stark edge on the outside but now a fun thing that I like to do with my cards as well as different things that I make is I like to add a little bit of dimension. So what I've done is I've already pre-mounted a couple pieces of foam tape and this comes in a variety of ways. You can buy um, squares or dots depending on the manufacturer and the shape that the foam will be. You can buy varying thicknesses. Some of them are thicker, some of them are thinner, or you can buy them on rolls as I've done here. I actually got my roll on sale at Walmart and when they were clearancing them out, I picked up a few of them because um, I wanted to stock up. And that just adds a little bit more texture and dimension by adding foam tape behind it. So that's a, the third tip. And now for the final tip. Now I know that there's a lot of empty space down here and I may add something when I'm all done I, I will see but I want to add just a little sparkle and just a little zing and who doesn't love glitter we learned um, how to glitter in kindergarten or many of us did and you know we'd get out the glitter and glue and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie I went to work one day last week with glue on or with glitter on my face people said I was that when I would see people they would say yeah you're sparkling um, but I really like using glitter glue and the reason I like it so much is because you have a lot more control over where you're putting it and it doesn't tend to make as much of a mess as if you were putting glue on an object and then sprinkling glitter and then knocking it off and glitter gets everywhere and especially if you're doing a card for Operation Right Home it it's, can actually be hazardous to our troops so you can't have glitter on anything so I try I don't use a lot of glitter but I still like sparkle, don't we all? And so I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle. Now I have to say, I'm a, I am was a bit hesitant to um, add sparkle to this particular one because it's so vint it has such a vintage feel. I was afraid that if I added sparkle that it might take away from that vintage feel. So, but I think we're going to be okay 
and I'm not sure, we're gonna kind of play it by ear here, I'm not sure that we're going to put um, sparkle all over the whole tree. I think I'm just going to choose key points and highlight them. For instance, I just use the, um, I highlighted the star. Now I could even fill in the middle and add even more sparkle, but I think I'm not going to. I think I'm gonna leave it just like that. And let's see, there are other stars throughout here. Um, maybe I'll do, just choose some stars right in the middle and just occasionally add just a dot of the glue. Now, you do have to be careful with these glues because it's really easy to get air in the little um, tip and then get it out in a big glob. So using, applying even pressure is good. Another thing that I found really helpful for me is I store all of my glitter glue upside down. Um, and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. But this is just adding little dots. And what I'm doing, I've decided as I'm doing this, I'm obviously not putting, outlining each of those teeny tiny little stars because some of them are so tiny, there's no way. I don't have anything that fine tipped. There are lots of ways to add glitter and we probably will explore some of those ways as we go throughout the series. Because of course, we all love to have glitter on our Christmas projects, but this is just one little way. Now Stickles also comes in um, one that's kind of a more matted one that just adds some more dimension in rock candy Stickles and you can do some fun things with that too. But that just gives it just a little pop of color here and there. Now the, I use this little container um, to store my stickles on my desk so that when I'm working on a project I can put my stickles right here and this is for larger bottles of glue and stuff and I actually have larger glitter glue um, both you can you can pick up glue like this at the Walmart dollar section or the Michaels dollar section at Studio G this is actually stickles from Ranger it comes in all shapes and sizes but then I have a drawer that has a lot of these and they're just little PVC couplers that I picked up at the home supply store actually I had my husband do it and they store great upside down they keep them in place so there is just that little bit of sparkle and pizzazz in there but I have to say I'm still not loving this huge empty space so let's add just a little more sparkle let's see here I am going to set this aside and pull out my handy little sparkly deliciousness um, yeah, I put that right on there. I know I've got some clear ones in here somewhere. Sorry about that. Here's some clear ones from Recollections that we'll just add a little bit, and it might even pick up the red tones around it. Now these these come on a rope, which isn't usually. I don't use these often, but I think in this case, I'm just going to cut them apart. And I think I just want three little ones here. Now these are actually attached, like I said, in a rope. So this will be really simple to just pull off three little ones and just put it right down here. Just that little bit of sparkle. Now to counterbalance that, let's get one little one. put in the opposite corner just like that so there we have our day number two we've learned about adding some sparkle and some bling and how to distress using a different method and how to add a little bit of dimension so thanks so much for stopping by today and remember to take some time to enjoy the little things don't forget to hop over to www.djsundry.blogspot.com to um, enter your tag in the um, giveaway that's coming up. Have a great day. Bye.